In this video, I'll be doing a detailed solution to the maths question you see on the screen here from the 2024 Cambridge A-Level Mechanics paper, specifically paper 4.1. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, or a different paper entirely, check our description below for links. And if you find this video or any of the videos on my channel useful and you want to help the channel out, what helps the most is sharing this video, especially if you're in a class group with other people sitting the exam. Also, I do appreciate likes, subscribes, or even a super thanks. In question five, they tell us about a bobsleigh uh, track, a slope. So basically a downhill we're talking about here. And they tell us that's 60 meters long, sorry, 60 meters, and it has an angle of 12 degrees. So this angle in here is 12. And a bobsleigh starts at the top of the slope and it has a speed. So it's coming down the hill and it begins with a speed of five. Uh, five meters uh, per second. Um, they tell us that there's no resistance. There will be in part B, but for now there's no resistance. And they want us to find the speed at the bottom of this hill. Uh, we can use forces or we can use energy. In the previous question, I actually said, next opportunity I got, I'll use forces. Because I like using energy more, I have to say. Uh, but I'll use forces in this case. Also, part B, it's easier to use forces. So we'll stick with it there. Um, what forces are acting on this? Think of the bobsled when it's coming down. It's already started to come down the hill, maybe, is the best way to think of it. Uh, here's the bobsled here. What forces are acting on it? It said there's no resistant force acting against it. The only one is gravity. There's a, a force due to gravity. Whatever mass this is, we don't know, but um, times 10, 10 for gravity. So 10m is the, the force on this. If we want to know, oh yeah, I've skipped a bit there. Um, so I want to know the, the speed at the bottom. Uh, to do that, uh, the, the easiest way would be just to use the equations of motion. So we'd want to know things like u, the initial speed, we know that. Uh, we want to know things like a, that's what I'm going to find out here. Um, we'd want to know things like uh, length. In that case, we do know, we know that's 60. And uh, t, if we don't know that, we could find it. We don't need to for this question. And ultimately the answer, we want to know V. Okay, you need three of these. Three of these will find everything. Um, so the one I'm going to find is A, because we know about forces and ultimately the overall force on a system is equal MA. So that's the A we're going to look for. So what's the forces on this acting down the hill? To do that, I'm going to break this guy up uh, like this. I'm going to break them up into one force that goes the direction we're interested in and the other force that has no influence on this system uh, when there's no uh, friction at least. So how do you do that? Um, it, it becomes second nature breaking these forces up for but until you're good at it which you probably won't become for a couple of years of doing it sometimes uh, I like to just just do it slowly as a trigonometry problem. This angle here is 12 degrees. That means this angle up here, that's 12, that's 90. This angle up here would be, uh, what would that be, 70, 70, or 68, 78, 78. Um, this is a right angle here, so this must be 12 again. That angle in there is 12. And what we're interested to know is what's this length, which is the same as this length, because I set this up as a, a rectangle. So basically, ultimately, I'm just looking for this length here. If I could draw that one more time, that's 12 degrees, that's 90. Uh, we know, sorry, that's a bit crooked, but we know this length is 10m. What is this length here? And that's just uh, to use this use sine. That's just, uh, let's see, sine 12 uh, is equal, this length, this unknown length, let's call it x for now, x over 10m. Uh, and then when you get good at it, you, you tend to just jump straight to this answer. And move the 10m across, you jump straight to the answer of 10m sine 12. Uh, right, how does that help? That's, sorry, I have that the wrong place there. That should be uh, coming down this hill here. Let me rub that out. 10m sine 12. That's this force coming down this hill. So that's the only force acting on this guy. Uh, and if the only force acting on it, that means F equals ma, which we now know equals 10m sine 12. The m's cancel, 
and we now know what a is put that into a calculator uh, let me see, <laughs> check if i've done that and uh, no no i haven't put that into calculator because i guess it's more useful to keep it as the exact answer a is equal 10 sine 12. if you want to put in a calculator fine just make sure to take enough decimal places uh, what are we looking for? We're ultimately looking for V. And so look at your equations of motion. Which one's the most useful? Uh, which one was it? It's V squared is equal uh, U squared plus 2AS. We know all of these. We know U, we know 2, we know S. Let's do it over here. V squared is equal, uh, U squared is 25, or 5 squared, uh, plus 2 times 60 times uh, A, which is uh, 10 sine 12 and uh, take the square root of both sides that equals v put that into a calculator no need to do it out by hand or anything put it into a calculator and you will get 16.6 uh, uh, meters per second uh, meters per second squared sorry and that's uh that's the speed at the bottom of this hill okay hopefully that's okay for part a let me clear off some of this and we'll do part b Actually, I rubbed off the whole thing. I don't think I did part A very well, so let's try to do better part B. Uh, we have the same situation. We have a slope. Uh, we still start off at a speed of five meters uh, per second. This time, this bobsleigh, when it's coming down the hill, it still has the, the same force from gravity acting on it. This time, it does have a resistance force. Some sort of force stops it going down the hill. Um, and they tell us that the coefficient of friction, uh, yeah, there it is there, coefficient of friction is 0 0.03. Remember how we get this force. This force here, this force due to friction is equal to the coefficient, uh, sorry, that's this guy here, multiplied by R. And remember what R is. R is the force due to gravity going into the slope. So the work we did in the first part, we're still going to use here. Uh, we're going to break that gravity up again to a force that pushes it down the hill. Uh, we had that. What was that? That was 10 m sine 12. This time we are going to want this or this guy here. And well, I, I don't bother doing the trigonometry for the second one, because if you have one of them, the opposite is if you have sine, the opposite is cosine. So this one down here is just 10 m cosine 12. Uh, so, so what is this force due to gravity? This force is the coefficient 0 0.03 multiplied by the force into the hill which is 10 m cosine 12. This time it's a bit more complicated there's more than one force but still the overall force on this guy going down the hill the overall force is still equal to ma. This time we just add these two together. The one down the hill is 10 m sine 12. Take away the one not helping him, pushing against him. Minus uh, 0 0.03 times 10 times, uh, sorry, m is in there, cosine 12. m is in everything. So we can just cancel m in everything so we know now know what a is these are all just numbers these are no numbers a is equal to all of this did i this time did i put it into a cal calculator i did a is equal 1.79 but i keep this number in my calculator and i use uh, the exact number okay this is just the three decimal places and um, hopefully you get more of exact number but once again what are they asking us to find they're asking us to find the time it takes to come all the way down this hill that's still uh, 60 meters long. Um, let's go through our equations of motion again. We, initial speed, uh, we know it's five. A, uh, the acceleration, we know it's here, 1.79. Again, I'd be, I'd be keeping this number in my calculator to use exactly. Uh, let's see, distance down the hill, we know it's 60. And uh, we're looking for time, so we don't know V either, and we're looking for time. So again, whenever you're doing this, you don't have to find the perfect equation. If you want to find V first, go ahead, and then maybe that makes it easier for you to find T. And that's exactly what happens in this case. Uh, you could find T first, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, the, the, the equation, let me write over here. 
s is equal ut plus a half a t squared. We know s, we know u, we know a. We're just missing these t's. So you could use this, fill these numbers in, and then you'd have to solve a quadratic though. So that'd be a bit messy. Uh, personally, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find v first. I'm going to use, uh, yeah, same as we did last time. v squared is equal to uh, u squared plus 2as. We know u, we know a, and we know s. So if we find v, then I'll find t later. I am still looking for t, uh, but, but I'll do that later. Um, solving for this, uh, let's move over here. Uh, v squared is equal, let's say 25 again, plus uh, two times this big mess, a, I'll leave, I'll leave a in. Remember that's on my calculator, uh, and then times 60. So I just put all this in my calculator and then get the square root of it. And I'd find V is equal, um, I can't read my own writing here, I'm afraid, at 15.5, I think I see. Again, I'd keep this in on my calculator and then I'd use, uh, which equation I'd use? Ah, S is equal U plus V over two times T. Rearrange that, you get T is equal uh, 2S over U plus V. We have all these numbers. We have a V here on your calculator. U is just five. That's 120 on the top. Put it all into your calculator using your exact number. Again, don't round off too early. Uh, and I get 5.86. That's the, that's rounded off. You round off at the end, never in the middle. <laughs> it would be a small bit of advice. Okay, that's it for the question. Um, I know there's a lot in there, so it's okay to have questions. Ask me them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.